Welcome back to our channel. So in the previous session, we have seen the input and output statements in Java programming. So we can read the input from the keyboard or from the files by using the two different classes called a scanner class or the buffer reader class. So if we are reading the data by using this buffer reader class, we have to use the two more classes that is either input stream reader class or the file reader class. So that we have completed in our previous session. So in this session, let's have a look on the command line arguments in Java programming. Command line arguments. So here we need not give the input in the input statement that means we need not write any input and input statements in the program itself so we can pass the inputs as an arguments while compiling the program right so we know that in order to compile a program we will use the java c command right so for example some cmd dot java is a file name so we have to compile by using java c cmd dot java right it will check for the errors and if, if it is an error free automatically dot class file so cmd dot class file will be generated in order to execute this class file we will use a command called java space cmd here we need not mention any extension either dot java or dot class file by default it will be taken as a dot class file right so here itself in the runtime itself, while running the program itself, we can pass the inputs to the program. So, whatever the inputs we are, we are supposed to give in the program, that input should be written here. So, if, if a program we have written for addition of two numbers, if you write a program for addition of two numbers, what are the, how many inputs we have to give? Two inputs we have to give. So A and B, the first number and second number. Both the numbers we can write here. So for example, 10 and 20. We can give the command as Java CMD and followed by the inputs 10, 20. And these arguments, I mean these inputs will be called as an arguments. And these arguments will be stored in arguments array arguments array right so we know that an array consists of a group of elements of same data type and always the index starts from zero so that means whatever the input we are giving after the class name that will be stored in array of zero in the index array of zero and the second argument will be stored in arg array of one so if you are writing args s as an array name, array, do, array of 0, array of 1, and if you write on the third statement, it will be stored in array of 2. So like, likewise, so every input will be stored in arg, arguments array. And this argument array is string. Right? Array of strings. Array of strings. Right? So these arguments array is strings. Whatever here we are giving a 10 as an input. This 10 is stored in args 0 and that is of string data type. Here 20 is stored in args 1 which is of string data type. Here 30 is stored in args 2 which is of string data type. So in order to use this 10 in our program we have to typecast typecast this args of 0. So in order to typecast we are having the command called integer dot parsing which we have seen in input statement right integer dot parsing of we can write args of 0 the array name of 0. 
similarly one similarly two similarly three right so like this we can convert the string to integer right so where we have to pass this argument array where we have to pass this is argument array so as we know that the inputs are nothing but an arguments arguments are nothing but inputs given to the some function right so we have to pass this arguments array to a function so here what is the function we are writing in the program that is called main function so all these arguments arrays should be inside the main function written inside the main function so we can write a main string because array is a string data type adds of we need not specify the size because at the runtime itself we are giving the number of arguments so we need not specify the size so dynamically, dynamically it will allocate the space so whatever the, whatever the comment, whatever the arguments we are passing at the runtime those arguments will be stored in this string array right hope you understood this one so in order to add two numbers we need not write any input statements in, in the function that means we are not writing any scanner class or a buffer reader class in the program just we are passing the inputs at the command prompt while executing the program see let us write the program so that you can easily understand some class add we have to write the main function so it should be public so that it will be available for all the classes so always the main function should be in a public specifier, public modifier. And also it should be a static. So if it is a public and static, it will be available for all the classes in the program. And this is the return type. So we can write a void, int, float, whatever it may be. So it doesn't return any value, we can write a void. But in Java, every function should have a return type. If you are not writing any return type, it will give an error. So every so in the C program we need not write write int add in the definition right so we can write implement this as int add and so on it will this is also right thing so by default the return type will be integer here explicitly the user have to specify the return type so there is no default return type right so void main function and here we have to pass an arguments what are the arguments string args we can give any any uh, error name right this one now we need not write any input statements just write down int a comma b comma c and now take the inputs a is equal to i mean uh, convert type convert it integer dot pass int of whatever what is the first input which is available in the array name of zero that means in the zeroth index next b is equal to integer dot Passing arguments array of 1. Now C is equal to A plus B. Now print out system dot out dot print ln C. So it will give an error. So why executing? So always the program should be saved with the name of a class name in which main function has been written so in our program number of classes can be written and in which class we are writing the main is called the main class so we have to save the file that means dot java file should be having the file name which is equal to the main class name right so we have to save it as add dot java so after writing this one 
we have to compile it by using java c add dot java after this we have to run the file which is java add so as it is the command line arguments we have to give the inputs in the command line itself so here we have to give two inputs let it be 10 20 automatically the result will be printed as 30 because the 10 will be stored in argument 0 the 20 will be stored in array 1 index 1 and the both uh, index 1 and index 0 values will be added and it will be assigned to C and the C will be printed so 30 will be printed here so this is the command line arguments any program any logic we can take the input in command itself so that's why we have to write this string dot arguments array in every main function so in the absence of this parameter that means argument declaration the program is not uh, about to execute so an error will be occurred so this is the syntax of a main function which is available in jvm so the compilation will be done successfully but while executing the program you will get the error so the jvm will check for this string arguments if you are not mentioning here it is nothing but a zero if you are mentioning here this will be assigned to r guess i mean the array index 0 and array index 1 hope you understood this command line arguments if you want to give any any input function here you have to write the scanner class and by using the scanner class object should be created and through that object we have to write the methods that means next line next int next float so these are the methods available in scanner class which we have seen in the earlier session so by using those functions we have to read the input by using this scanner class or buffer reader class so here you can see we are not writing any input functions in the program we are giving the directly the inputs at the command prompt so hope you understood this command line arguments right so if you are having any doubts regarding this feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that i will definitely try to clarify all your doubts if you really understood my sessions like my sessions Share my sessions with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.